The true foundation of all culture is the knowledge and understanding of water. Hello everyone. Here is the latest version of the Victor Schauberger Tornado Home Generator, a free energy device that can create more energy than it consumes when built correctly. In theory, when it is spun up to a certain critical speed, it will suddenly accelerate all on its own to a much higher speed as the runaway free energy process is activated. The whirl pipes accelerate water flow through an anomalous process that was perhaps best seen in my earlier experiment using slanted veins in a hollow transparent pipe. The veins accelerated ionized water vapor flow by about 70%. The whirl pipes do the same thing with water and pull excess energy out of the etheric radiant energy field. A simple water vortex can in fact draw energy from another unseen dimension of reality, one which underlies the very fabric of existence. In the new version I've put in a fluted deflector ring and also built a special nozzle that constricts the flow at the very end of the whirl pipe to create a powerful jet of water. In this experiment, we see how the jets can spin the rotor, operating as uh, just like a rocket using um, inertial um, propulsive force. However, the jets are used not to push the rotor forward by using solely inertial reactive force, but by deflecting the jet using a deflector ring which bounces the jet back at a special part of the nozzle, which acts as a kind of catching glove for lack of a better word, for the water. The reason for this unique design is most likely the water vortex reaches the implosion point right before it exits the whirl pipe, and the energy of the implosion is somehow better captured using a deflector ring and catcher. In a previous experiment, I showed how the third generation whirl pipe is able to pass the same amount of water as a straight pipe is able to, with the same sized end openings, in spite of having greater surface area inside. This is already anomalous, and at higher speeds of water flow, the degree of anomalous activity could increase past the break-even point. I will eventually create a fourth generation roll pipe that will exceed the flow rate of its straight counterpart. Another useful experiment would be to have the rotor hooked up to a hose of water so that continuous water flow could be achieved out of the rotor's whirl pipes while it remains stationary. Then you could really study and see how, how well the jets of water, deflector ring, and nozzle catcher are all working together. Modifi modifications could be made based on what is observed. So yeah, I don't really know how well the whole system is working. The uh, I would need a, a special setup with um, the jets uh, going at high speed, like shooting out with high pressure, and then kind of uh, slowly move the rotor and see how well the deflector ring is actually uh, working to deflect the water back at uh, the nozzle where the catchers are and see if it can actually push itself forward um, using only um, pressurized water internally. So yeah, that's a future um, experiment I may or may not produce.
Okay, so yeah, I have it at about 535 RPM. Uh, this motor's um, this motor's optimal uh, running amperage is uh, 10 amps at seven, um, about seven volts. So yeah, I'm just going to turn it off here. Uh, so yeah, that's well below um, what it could handle. So at top uh, voltage and amperage, um, it could probably go to a couple thousand RPM, but uh, I don't want to um, damage the system. I'd rather leave it up to uh, my friend who um, I'm, uh, well this, this device, um, I made it for a friend, uh, we'll say, and um, so yeah, I don't want to wreck or damage this device because I'm going to send it to my friend eventually, but um, in another model, uh, what I might do is just run it um, at uh, not only the highest speed, but even above the highest speed because the motor can actually handle a higher um, amount of, of electricity temporarily before it will, before it'll burn out. So I could actually destroy the machine and um, just to reach a much higher RPM briefly and just study it from there because that's the point of uh, making these things is to learn what uh, to learn um, how you know what I can do and uh, what's possible and everything so yeah I do have a, a duplicate um, version that I uh, will put together eventually uh, here's the, the motor for it but this model was actually built for somebody else and I reinforced the rotor with these um, structures because I didn't want the uh, world tubes to lift up like with greater RPM they tend to lift up as I had seen in some of my other versions so my idea was to just put them uh, horizontally flat to get away from that but my friend wanted the original uh, design where the world pipes are kind of going down at an angle so therefore I had to put in these uh, reinforcing structures and um yeah i mean there's still there's still room for improvement here like there's there's still the the fourth generation roll pipe i need to make and the nozzles of course these are kind of simplifications of the actual what the patent says you know they're supposed to be four holes not one and uh the nozzles are, are um more uh defined in the patent um because of the small size i can't really put in much detail with these nozzles and so one option would be to make a much bigger version of this in the future. Maybe instead of one foot in diameter, have it two feet in diameter, and then I could create nozzles of much greater um, complexity and uh, definition. So that'll be something to think about in the future. And uh, of course, making it out of metal eventually, that's another option. And yeah, we'll just kind of go from there. I'll keep trying and keep uh, experimenting. So yeah, that's all for now. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to mention. The uh, the rotor is a little bit off. Uh, like at at the on the one side, the nozzle is kind of at the bottom of the um, the deflector ring, and then. On this side, it's sort of at the top. Like if you look at it closely, um, they're sort of like just barely touching, like hitting the top of it. The hole in the uh, nozzle is kind of just hitting the very top. So uh, that could be corrected. Like the whole thing could be shifted a little bit by removing these little, um, these wooden, uh, kind of spacers at the bottom and shifting the top structure. It's just that I glue gunned it to the bowl already, so that would be kind of difficult. You'd have to 
remove the, uh, the glue or melt it off or something. Most of the glue job was done with epoxy glue, but some of it was with the regular glue gun. Uh, there's different, there's three different kinds of plastic here. There's transparent resin, there's non-transparent uh, resin, 3D printed, and then there's regular PLA plastic. These structures are hollow. So each different kind of plastic has a different shrinkage um, percentage. So even though on my computer it all might fit together perfectly, when I print it, because of the different shrink rates, all of the pieces don't fit together perfectly. So you have to kind of uh, screw around with different um, things. Like for example, I had to cut, I had to put these spacers in to kind of get it uh, centered better so that the nozzles weren't touching the deflector ring anywhere. And same with the bottom, the, the whole thing sat a little too low. So I had to add these pieces of wood at the bottom of each um, beam or whatever to get it higher. And then of course the motor itself was a little bit too small, like the hole was too big. So I had to like wrap the motor in uh, masking tape, like layers of masking tape to get it to fit in snugly. And uh, for the coupler, it's a stainless steel coupler, but I had these other ones first, these brass ones, but they turned out to be kind of crappy because the stainless steel one is bigger. It's, um, I have another one here somewhere, but it grabs more of the, uh, the rod. It's a 3 16 um, diameter brass rod, and then the motor is uh, 3.14. Uh, millimeters, so I was able to find the exact um, the exact right size, luckily, uh, online, with the help of Grok, actually. It has helped me quite a lot here with running the numbers and finding the exact um, motor number. Uh, the thing is incredible. I, I really admire uh, Grok. It just augments my intelligence, for lack of a better word and allows me to accomplish uh, much more than I could normally. And so, yeah. So that's pretty much it for now. Um, hopefully I'll have time before I move out of this house to show you this experiment. It's a, a high voltage um, experiment involving a rotating spark gap. Uh, I had it going for a second, but then it started to short out in the uh, homemade capacitor. And I've actually bought a, a neon, an old school neon sign transformer, high voltage, because this uh, Chinese one has a lot of safety mechanisms. And the point of that was to, uh, it's sort of a high voltage um, recreation of sorts of the Bedini uh, pulse motor. So it's basically a high voltage pulse motor. And once I get it to work at a very high pulse rate, probably um, 7,000 pulses per second, then I will hook it up to a charge battery and see if there's any radiant uh, energy collection of the system. So that's a future project, but I don't know if I'll finish that in time before I have to move out because I'm unemployed and uh, I have to sell my house here very quickly before uh, the, the bank forecloses on me. So, yeah. Unfortunately, um, that's life. So yeah, so I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.